Hello fellow Salesforce enthusiasts and welcome to 21 Knots Salesforce How-To Thursdays. Today's how-to is all about collecting data or pushing data from any web form into Salesforce. We are a proud partner of FormAssembly and will be leveraging their awesome tool to do today's demo. FormAssembly goes beyond Salesforce's web to lead functionality and gives you the capability to create any type of form and have that data pushed into your Salesforce instance to any of the standard objects or any custom ones you've developed. You can sign up for a 14 day trial on their website and if you're interested, reach out and I might be able to provide you with a discount. Are you ready? Let's CRM. The first thing we want to do is create our free form assembly trial account. So we're going to go to formassembly.com. And right on the main page, you'll see a uh, let's start free trial button. So go ahead and click on that. And what we'll be doing here, you just close this chat bot out. We're going to create a username. Mine will be talk demo. Then input a your password and then work email so enter your actual email address here agree to the terms and create your account Once you get to this page, uh, verify your email. You're gonna have an email in your inbox from FormAssembly that will ask you to activate your account. So just click on this button and we should be good to go. Let me do some housekeeping here and close uh, my first two tabs. Okay, now what we wanna do is connect our FormAssembly instance to our Salesforce instance so that we can sync up the uh, the fields. So I'm just gonna click, I'll get started. I'll take it from here. And then we want to create a new form. Form assembly comes with a number of useful templates uh, that you can use as a start off point. So we're gonna do that. Again, the purpose of our particular exercise is to create a contact form so uh, once you're at a conference or you have a kiosk mode in your restaurant on an iPad, you want people to sign up to your uh, newsletter or mailing list, uh, you could just have that uh, web page up all the time and that form and people will just fill in their first name, last name, email, phone number, whatever information you want to capture. And then that information is automatically going to be pushed uh, into the Salesforce leads object in our case, but you can create any form uh, that pushes data into any Salesforce objects. That is the power of, of uh, form assembly. So you'll get the idea here as we progress. So I'm gonna use a template. So from our list of template, I'm just gonna grab one. Uh, again, there's a number of useful templates in here. Email newsletter sign up form. I'm gonna take this one and hit start building. So by default, you see we've got first name, last name, and email. Uh, let's go ahead and sp spruce this up a little bit. Uh, I don't want this text box. Uh, let's see here. You can go to add content. And what I wanna do here is insert an image with our logo. So select image, I'm gonna upload a file here. The URL. Alternate text. We'll move this up here. I am going to get rid 
of this section up here so you could just select it and click on this delete button okay this is starting to look good what I want to do here is also add a phone number so um, they also have nifty predefined content that you can use uh, and I know they have one for US phone number assuming we're only going to be using this form in the US we could see that uh, it is formatted for a US phone number also so what we're going to do we're going to make this required as well and check done all right so we've got first name last name email phone what's next well we are going to set up our Salesforce connector so let's go ahead and save the work we've done already and then under options on the left here we want to go to connector so as we could see there's already a Salesforce marketing cloud connector that's disabled uh, that's just the default what I want to do here is delete this because we want to connect it to our sales cloud so let me go ahead and do that so let's add a connector as you can see form assembly comes with a bunch of great connectors and we want to add a Salesforce connector so go ahead and click on Salesforce and then we want to configure it in the connector screen we want to connect it to our Salesforce environment so go ahead and log into it and we're going to allow form assembly to connect to our instance and that's all there is to it now what we want to do is enable this connector and let's save this now what we want to do is connect the objects that we've built over here into our lead record and just test it out and then we're going to add some additional fields to it so uh, if you want to view your form you can click on view here's what it looks like let's go ahead and go back to our connector and then configure it which object do we want to connect with? Well, we definitely want to connect to the lead object in our Salesforce instance. Let's see what we want to do. We want to update the lead record. Uh, if there's a match on the email address that gets created. So if somebody enters the form and essentially has entered it in the past, what we want to do is update the lead record so we'll find the matching email address and if their names or phone number has changed we're just going to grab the existing lead record in Salesforce and update it uh, with the email if there's nothing to update so if there's no match then we want to create a new lead record so we're going to select update here and the object is going to be the lead record And then the lookup field is going to be, so here is where form assembly is actually pulling all the fields from our lead object. So if you had any custom fields in here, form assembly would present them to you. So we want to match email. And then here's where we select a field in our form. And that's going to be email address. So we're looking up we're updating a lead record if the email addresses match if there's no match then we want to create a new record and over here is where we are going to select our form fields so we've got first name we want to get a, a value from a field in our form first name last name is going to be last name we're going to map another field and select email will equal email and lastly 
we're going to add a phone number field under phone grab the value from the phone field in our list okay we're making good progress let me check everything and click on save it's done we can okay these values as well so here's what our form looks like already now if we go to our Salesforce instance and go look at the lead object I just want to make sure that we're capturing all the fields that we want to capture here that there's no other required fields so let's go to leads and pull up a lead record details so we've got first name last name we've got email and we've got a phone number now let me create a new lead here okay so we have a company that's required as well as a lead status so what we'll be doing here is uh, essentially creating for lead status a hidden field in form assembly that will say working dash contacted your pick list values might be might be different than mine uh, but since this particular individual fills up the form in kiosk mode I'm going to assume that uh, we've contacted or it's a working lead so we're going to do that we're going to add lead status and company to our form so let's go back to form assembly click on build I'm going to add some content it's going to be a text input and we're going to call this company let's move it up over here done and then we're going to add another text field uh, but this time it's going to be a hidden field uh, we don't want the user filling out that form to see it and this is where you could default some nice little values for your data entry so this field is called lead status and in lead status uh, once you still have this field selected on the left side in field properties scroll down and you'll see default value and in our case we want working dash contacted Make sure your default value is spelt exactly like it is in the Salesforce pick list or else it's going to uh, error out. Okay, we've got that done. Working contacted. Okay, well now that we have our fields, let's make sure to save this. And what we want to do is go and add these two fields, company and lead status, to our connector so that they're map, mapped back to Salesforce. So in the connector, go ahead and click on configure. And down in the field mapping section, we want to map another field. Uh, company, we want to map to our company field. Check that. And we want to map our status down here to our hidden field, which is lead status. Will, will, which will push out that value. Okay, we are now ready to test our form. So let's go to publishing. And this publishing link is where the form assembly gives you a bunch of different options to have your form. So in this particular section, you can copy HTML code and paste it into your uh, a web page on your website, or you could just have a link to um, a direct address, which is up here, which is what we'll be using. But just to show you, if we go on my website, I have a page called event, which basically pulls 
this information and I can have this page on kiosk mode and this is where people would uh, subscribe to our mailing list. So under publishing we can click on uh, this link up here and let's test it out. And let's hit the subscribe button. Thank you, response has been processed successfully. And if we go back into our Salesforce environment and go to the leads, let me drop this down to today's leads. And we could see that John Smith has been created from Acme. Uh, email address, the lead status is the hidden value that we pushed into Salesforce. Let's go look at that. Here we go, working contacted details. phone numbers over here. So the integration seems to uh, be perfect at this point. Now one thing I want to do is if you notice once I pushed the form uh, it basically said thank you. Um, I want it to come back to the actual form uh, since this would be in kiosk mode uh, be ready to accept another entry from a different individual. So let's go ahead and work on that. Back to form assembly you're going to uh, copy this value, which is uh, essentially where the form gets filled out. And then go to the notification option down here. And then over here is where I'm going to put in that URL. And over here we get little hint that uh, if information is provided, the thank you message above will not be displayed, which is exactly the, be the behavior we're looking for. So we're gonna apply and let's try that again. So I'm gonna go to view. click on subscribe here and you see that it comes back to this form which is great we go back to our leads and today's leads we should see Jane Doe there we go now I realize the example we did today uh, is available in Salesforce stock web to lead uh, functionality uh, but in my mind, uh, form assembly does a better job uh, from a formatting standpoint, uh, and then it could just push data into any object. So we just use leads for exam for an, as an example today. But yeah, the, the opportunities are pretty endless uh, with what you can do here. If you're interested in trying out form assembly, uh, let me know. My email address is below. I do have access to a 30% discount uh, if you're interested. So go ahead, have fun. Hope you enjoyed today's uh, how-to, and we'll see you next week. Have a great day. Please comment below. Uh, let me know uh, what you'd like to see in future series, and uh, feel free to subscribe. We release a video like this every Thursday. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.